Hello scholars, I hope your week has been treating you well and you're excited and prepared to meet your new mentors this Saturday. Mentorship is probably one of the greatest gifts anyone could give you and it's something that has personally changed the trajectory of my life. Being the first in my family to accomplish a lot of things, I arrogantly had a chip on my shoulder throughout college. Over time, I became more and more grateful to my mom and brother who made sacrifices to allow me to get to where I am, but it wasn't until I met someone I could call a mentor that I learned that I didn't have to keep figuring things out on my own. Lyndon Hewling was a student affairs officer on my college campus when I was 21. I maintained a relationship with him over the course of these 10 years, and I interviewed him for the purpose of this video so he can maybe share some of his insights. What makes a good mentee? And also, why was I the best mentee? Mm, mm. So going back to that one about the best mentee, you're definitely on the list of mentees. All right, whatever. What makes, well, that. shut up. What makes a good mentee? A good mentee, um, you know, is somebody who brings their authentic self to, to that relationship, you know? Um, somebody who is, who is passionate about what they want to do, who is eager and curious and open-minded, um, and, and open to hearing different perspectives. As you could tell, I'm his favorite mentee of all time. I really wanted to get Lyndon's perspective on mentorship and why he made it such a pivotal role in his career as a student affairs officer and now someone who works at Human Resources to really help guide people of color into new job opportunities. You know, mentorship is is, you know, more than anything else, an opportunity for, um, in particular, students of color, you know, underrepresented students to see role models, you know, who are doing the things that they aspire to do. But it's another thing to actually meet somebody who walk the same path you're walking and can give you meaningful insight, you know, and real insight into um, what it takes to to operate in a space where, you know, there's just not a lot of us represented. I met Lyndon in my junior year of college when I was an extremely jaded student activist, exhausted from politics, and trying to change the minds of the willfully ignorant on my campus. I showed less and less passion in my future and was probably going to end up in law school until Lyndon had the patience to sit me down and truly listen to what I thought would be rewarding. Lyndon told me his story about coming from a struggling community in Vallejo and being the only one in his family to go to college. When we met, we didn't have any particular future for you in mind and I think you were you know for yourself trying to figure out how you could take your values and the things that you cared around you know whether it was around student activism supporting um, you know kids like you that grew up you know more low-income areas who wanted to do better and make a difference and you know I think the role that I was able to play was just to help you see possibilities you know whether that's higher education working with high school students you know whatever it is you plan on doing down the road knowing that those possibilities exist. And then, um, you know, personally, we have very similar backgrounds, and so it was easy to connect and, you know, kind of reflect on our own experiences and, and you know, learn from each other in that regard. Yeah, we, we both have two kids. We both have a wife. <laughs> yeah. Um, we both eat uh, kick cereal for breakfast. We both live next to a chicken shop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we both live above a crown fried chicken, very similar. He introduced to me the transformative power of education and how his students carry with him the legacy of activism and change he sparked in them. He reminded me that although different careers and opportunities are dominated by people from affluent backgrounds, I can still enter the educational realm and make an impact. And to this day, my mentor shares with me how men of color can be positive influences to the people around them. What are some of the most frustrating parts of, of uh, being a mentor? You know, it, not only in just like seeing your mentee struggle, but also in, you know, also in like, like just being frustrated with the person. I think a big piece that I actually try to focus a lot on with the students that I mentor is this idea of professionalism. And it's not like we're going to sit down and talk about, you know, how to be in a meeting or how to write emails. It's more things like, you know, showing up on time or not letting your emotions get the best of you when you're in an argument or you're in a leadership position and people are looking up to you and you're just flipping out. It's, it's these more casual aspects of what it means to be a professional that can be hard to um, coach when you, when you see some bad habits and you want to kind of talk about them in a way that's not going to be, you know, not going to frustrate that person you're mentoring. If that makes sense. So this idea that in order to be successful, you know, in our country, we need to 
you know, in many ways, figure out how to code switch and navigate our way through structures that are not designed for us. So this idea of standardized testing and how shitty it is, but it's a big piece of, you know, for your students, where they're going to go to college, you know, getting that high school degree. It's, it's understanding that these structures are in place, talking about them, critiquing them, but also trying to explain that, you know, until these systems are dismantled and, and built to be more equitable, we, we got to work with them. So again, these systems and these careers were not built with us in mind. And so we have to work hard and we have to be thoughtful about how to get to where we want to be. And a mentor can really help you do that. After I met Lyndon, not only did I have someone I saw who succeeded everywhere I wanted to, but I learned that I didn't have to keep doing things on my own, even though I could. With all that being said, always remember that mentorship is a two-way street. Not only should you be conscious of your contributions to this relationship, but you should also understand that there's a lot to be learned in having a relationship with someone special like you. Good luck this Saturday. And remember, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. One takeaway that I got from my relationship is that mentorship does matter. Now I had a responsibility to give back and that I'm able to give back in a way that is meaningful, you know, that can help other people like myself who grew up with, um, you know, some of the similar barriers that I had be, be successful and would be an example of that. And what's great is now you're doing that for other people. To me, that's, that's why I do it. You know, not only were you able to, to navigate, get to where you want to be, but you see the value in that and you're trying to give that back to your students. And that's, that's why I do it. There's your heartwarming answer right there. I'll cut that. There you go. I'll, I'll okay. put that, I'll put that in the video. I'll put that in the post. You can, you can end it with that. Yeah. And do the <laughs>